There are 537 million people around the world living with diabetes, and that number is growing. The burden of diabetes is massive. It's a huge cost to our government healthcare system. For type 1 people, and I have type 1 diabetes, it's a huge, huge problem. Over the last 20 years, significant advancements in stem cell research and therapies have been one of the most promising methods of creating new insulin-making cells needed to cure type 1 diabetes. It's one of the few diseases where a single cell type is destroyed or missing. And so the idea that if you could create those cells and replace them, you can really address the underlying causal biology of the disease directly. Vertex Pharmaceuticals, a biotech company that works on treatments for many diseases, including cystic fibrosis, got into the diabetes space a few years ago. Its stock has been on a steady climb over the past five years. I've had type 1 diabetes for 25 years, and when I heard that Vertex Pharmaceuticals had cured a man of his type 1, I had to find out more. I'm really interested to know this transition from needing insulin to being almost off it. Can you tell me what that was like for you? Can you imagine winning a million dollar lottery? Like, while sitting here, somebody says, hey, here's a ticket. Boom, winner. That was me. Brian Shelton is the first patient in Vertex's clinical trial to be infused with new stem cell-derived beta cells, the cells that make insulin. Shelton's insulin needs are almost completely gone. The amount of insulin he was taking has dropped by 92%. And I was like, this is, this is what I've been dreaming about. Everything is working fine. My numbers are great. Other companies around the world, including Viacite and CRISPR, as well as Novo Nordisk, one of the biggest insulin manufacturers in the world, are also working on curing the disease. We wanted to find out why finding a cure for diabetes is so hard, and just how close Vertex and other companies are to solving this problem. Before we look at why it's tough to cure, it's important to understand how type 1 diabetes affects the body. It's not known why, but the immune system attacks and destroys the cells in the pancreas that make insulin, known as beta cells. These cells regulate glucose levels in the blood, which the body needs for energy. Without insulin, blood sugar will continue to rise. That autoimmune response has really limited the ability to create a simple regenerative strategy to cure type 1 diabetes. Type 1 diabetes is different from the more common type 2. Type 1 diabetics have to take insulin for the rest of their lives. Type 2 diabetics still make insulin, although their bodies become resistant to it. It can be managed with diet, exercise, medication, but some do need to take insulin. All types cause high blood sugar, which cause kidney disease, heart disease, blindness, and other complications down the road. Neither have a cure. There have been incredible advancements in diabetes technology, including continuous glucose monitors and smarter insulin pumps. But managing the disease is still a lot of work. People don't really necessarily realize that we're doing regular day-to-day -day things, but also trying to keep ourselves alive at the same time, and that can be a lot. There's so many other factors that can impact my blood sugars. If it's not hormones, it's stress, it's illness, it's food, obviously, exercise, hydration, different medications. And I can do things the same way each day, and it's always gonna give a different trajectory. So even right now, I'm actually having a high blood sugar doing this interview. People often say, well, what's the big deal? Don't eat sugar or inject insulin and like get on with it. But there's another aspect of what I would call the psychosocial cost of the disease. So when a child gets the disease, it affects the whole family in a way that is never ending. The most stressful part of having diabetes for me is worrying about low blood sugars, especially while I'm sleeping. If you go too low, it can cause seizures and even kill you. And while I do have insurance, it's still incredibly expensive. The Diabetes Research Foundation, JDRF, estimates it costs about $20,000 a year for an adult with type 1 in the U.S., and more than $90 billion a year globally. Unfortunately, we're seeing research change the course of the disease. Dr. Doug Melton started researching a cure for diabetes when his six-month-old son was diagnosed in the 1990s. He received a grant from JDRF in 2000 to try to turn stem cells into insulin-making cells. And I was extremely fortunate to work at a private university, Harvard University, which made it possible for us to use human embryonic stem cells. So the first challenge was to derive those cells and get access to them and make use of them. And as people may know, they 
come from leftover material from IVF clinics. In the early 2000s, there was some controversy associated with stem cell research, but we advocated on Capitol Hill to the president and then through funding to researchers that this was the pathway to a potential cure for diabetes. And what was that idea? The idea is pretty simple. It's to turn a stem cell, which in theory can be any cell in the body, into functional insulin-producing cells. And that's not a one-step process. Cells need to be instructed as to what to become. So what we learned over a long period of time is a six-step procedure where we first tell the cells to become part of like the gut tube, then to become part of the pancreas, then to become what's called endocrine or hormone making, and then become beta cells and then become functional cells. It just was a lot harder than I thought it would be. Dr. Felicia Paliuka was a postdoc student working in Melton's lab. They knew if the cells turned blue, they were producing insulin. And one night in 2014, it finally worked. That night, we were watching the, the plate rotate, and we started to see blue uh, appearing in these wells. And it was one of those moments that you have so rarely, I think, in science where you're seeing something that no one's seen before, that no one's been able to do before. And that was the moment we knew we had cracked some really important biology. How much did all of this cost? Maybe an important way to think about the cost is how many people were involved. So I would say over that period of several decades, it's 50 to 100 students and postdocs who dedicated themselves to join on this quest. And as many people have said, Good science is hardly ever done by one person. It's a team activity. But I think you were asking about how many pennies, how many dollars did it cost. I don't have an exact number. A reasonable estimate would be $50 million. That's a lot of money. But compared to the cost of treating diabetes or the amount of money spent on injecting insulin, I dare say it's a near trivial amount of money. After this breakthrough, Melton created a company called Sema Therapeutics, named after his two children, after his second child was also diagnosed with type 1. The company focused on reproducing more cells and turning it into an actual treatment. In 2019, it caught the interest of Vertex, who bought the company for $950 million. Then in 2021, Vertex received FDA approval for a clinical trial. The first trial that we've started is a trial of a, of a therapy called VX880. Patients in this trial will receive a one-time infusion of the cells, and then they will take uh, standard immunosuppression drugs to protect those cells from being destroyed. Brian Shelton has been a type 1 diabetic for 44 years. He's the first patient in Vertex's clinical trial, and only one of two people who have been dosed so far. Within a few days, the amount of insulin he typically would inject dropped by 91%, and his pancreas, with a new infusion of beta cells, started producing insulin again, the first human using this method to do so. Now my body does it all on its own. It took a couple days for me to realize that things are different now, you know, that I can actually live like a regular person, and I'm doing it. And I'm doing it pretty well, as a matter of fact. Everything is working fine. My numbers are great. Before he entered the clinical trial, Shelton suffered many hypoglycemic episodes, losing consciousness more times than he could count. When we talked to Brian, it had been seven months since his infusion of new cells. His insulin needs were still down by 92%. His average blood sugar was 146, down from 200 before the clinical trial began. This is within good range for someone who has type 1, but still a bit higher than someone who doesn't have diabetes. Regardless, the worry and stress of keeping his blood sugar under control is, according to him, almost completely gone. Last night, I had an ice cream. And when was the last time you bought an ice cream? Just, just to eat it, not for any special reason, you know? But I did, and it was delicious. But, you know, you stop eating all these things, and I'm like, why should I have to give up living to live, you know? And, and it's working. The news of this great result spread quickly and was especially surprising because as the first person in the trial, Shelton only received half of the anticipated dose to ensure it was safe. What was your reaction when you heard about the first patient's results? Well, I, I guess I'm one of the lucky people in the world that thought about doing an experiment for 20 some years and then the first results in were even better than I'd hoped. I, I can't imagine a better first patient result. 
Vertex's clinical trial plans to infuse 17 participants over the next few years. There is now a second patient in the trial, and the company expects to release additional data later this year.